Join with me now as we enter into worship, to worship the God that walks with us, that carries us, that holds us up through day to day. The Lord bore you on eagles' wings to enter into a covenant with you. Now therefore, if you will obey the Lord and keep the covenant, you shall be the Lord's own position among all peoples. The Lord bore you on eagles' wings to establish a colony of heaven on earth. Now, therefore, if you will obey the Lord and keep the covenant, you shall be the Lord's ambassadors to all peoples. Together we all say, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Let us gather in prayer. Lord, out of deep need we enter your holy temple, seeking your presence and your guidance. As Jesus charged his waiting disciples, deliver now your charge to us and lead us as he led them into the fields white with harvest, that we may become faithful laborers in your vineyard. Amen. Scripture reading today is from Romans 5, verses 1 through 8. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. May God have his blessing to this his holy day.
is entitled Final Proof of Love. What are you hoping for in these days? I, I know what I am hoping for. I'm hoping for us to be able to enter stage two of the provincial opening process during this COVID-19 pandemic. We live in an area, I live in an area which has been held back to stage one for now. I'm hoping not only to enter stage two, but to have this COVID nightmare end. And I'm hoping that soon I can sit and visit with family members, hug my grandchildren and children, and just get out of my apartment comfortably and return to some kind of normal life. And I'm hoping for church to return to some sort of normalcy as well, where we can all sit together in this sanctuary at the same time and worship God together. And I'm hoping for a change in our world, in revival as an after effect of COVID-19, as an opening of hearts and transformation of those that would come to the Lord and know him during this time. And as transformational in loving all mankind on an equal footing. Those are some of the things that I'm hoping for. What about you? People used to hope for things like winning the lottery or hoping it would rain or maybe hoping it wouldn't rain or hoping that their sports team, whatever sports team and whatever sports they were inter interested in would, would um, win that next tournament. That was what we hoped for. Our hoping has changed. Our hoping, though, changed or not, is not the hoping that Paul is talking about here. So, for Paul, hope is not wishful thinking. For Paul, it is the absolute certainty of the future. Paul's hope is not grounded in self, but in another. It is grounded in God's faithfulness to keep his promises. Paul's hope is in what God will do for the believer because of the grounding of what God has done for the believer. And Paul's gospel message has benefits for the believer. For now they, now we, now you are justified by faith. And in this they stand, we stand, you stand, in a new relationship to God. And this new relationship is explained further as Paul writes this letter. But the sense is that now we are set right with God, the Father, by means of the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ. We now have an amazing friendship with God that we did not have before Christ's death and resurrection. And from him, from Jesus, comes peace with God. And the fact that we can boast in this hope that we now have. So the first benefit that Paul talks about is peace. You see, formerly we were under the aspect of rebellious humanity, under the power of sin so that no one could know the way of peace. And now we have that power of peace within. Colossians 3.15 tells us, Let the peace of Christ rule your hearts since as members of one body you were called to peace. This peace is not focused on the absence of trouble. The, the peace is not related to our circumstances, but it is a goodness of life that is untouched by what happens around us. You can be in the midst of great trials and still have the peace of Jesus Christ. You can still have biblical peace within you. It's not easy, though. I know that, and it is easily stolen. I mean, just look around at our daily news for uncertainty and unrest to rise up and overwhelm our hearts with anxiety. If we look at the success and joys of those around us, we can be lured into this never-ending longing for the possessions, the personality traits, and the positions in life that we don't have. An encounter with a difficult person, or with ever-changing technology, or with crimes of human dignity, we quickly take our peace. It almost feels like we have to daily fight for our peace. It's, it's crucial now more than ever that we allow Christ's peace 
to rule our hearts. To feel Christ's peace in your heart, you must first focus. Our world continually demands our attention, and we struggle sometimes to keep our thoughts centered, our tasks completed. It is at, uh, at times it's hard to focus. This focus, though, is crucial when it comes to our relationship with Christ. If you if you lack focus when you're trying to read Scripture, what happens? You feel lost. You, you may feel like you have no clue about what it is that you were reading or how it is affecting you or how it should inspire you or touch you or guide you or correct you. Now, I'm, I'm not talking about memory issues here. I know that sometimes there are people that, that deal with memory issues and they can't remember yesterday, let alone a few minutes ago. I'm talking about focus issues. The two are very different. When our focus is gone, we are not connecting with the words. We are not connecting with what God is saying to us, to know the significance. In order to allow the peace of Christ to rule our hearts, important, it is important to recognize who the true source of peace is. 1 Thessalonians 3.16 says, Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times, in every way. God is referred to as the God of peace over and over again in Scripture. And remember, our soul craves peace. Don't buy into the notion that an afternoon of solitude or a weekend at the beach will give you peace. Peace is not a serene setting or even a peace of mind. Anything or anyone who promises you peace is not being authentic with you. True and lasting soul peace is found only in one person, Jesus Christ, the source of all peace. You remember that everyday peace is a gift from God, and we must learn to defend it relentlessly. We must be ready to fight off every lie raised against God's character and his plan. Defend yourself with this verse. Be sober-minded. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, howls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. With Peter 5 When you are clothed in Christ, you are stronger than any attack of the enemy. The second benefit that Paul mentions is boasting in our hope. That is, we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. In chapter 1, 22 and 23 of Romans, Paul says that we traded the glory of God who holds the whole world in his hand, the cheap figurines you can buy at any roadside stands. That's the message version. We are out of sync with God, with creation, and with each other. That's what Paul is saying. He says, all humanity falls short of God's glory. But now those who believe are justified through the redemption of Christ, graciously provided by Christ and provided by God the Father. Plus, we have now a hope of sharing in God's glory. So to boast in our hope is to lift up our heads high as we live with God-given confidence. With the circumstances and when the circumstances dominate your emotions negatively, we may ask, where is your faith? Without an unshakable trust in our Heavenly Father, there is no peace, no hope, no joy, and certainly no rejoicing or be hosting in God. I know that there are times when we just don't feel like boasting in God. I know that. But I also know that when we rejoice in spite of how we feel, it is the greatest expression of our faith and hope that can be seen. It isn't about being happy. It's about our declaration in the midst of trouble. It's about knowing and declaring our Lord God as great and mighty. It's about knowing and declaring his love and care, which we know is being worked out on our behalf. 
Every circumstance should bring us into a closer encounter with our Father, a drawing near to Him for the salvation we need in the circumstances in which we find ourselves. Proverbs decrees, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. Our own understanding is limited until the Spirit of Truth is able to reveal truth to us. And we are able to be ready and willing to hold the mind of Christ in the wisdom of God. When this comes, we must choose to acknowledge his ways and walk in them, to find the life he gives. This, this is the fear of the Lord. This is departing from your own wisdom. This is a turning away from the evil of self-will. We don't outthink our problems. We bring them captive to the obedience of his word. And we boast in the greatness and the glory of God. In verse 6, Paul, for the first time, associates suffering with God's love. Paul sets them together with God's grace and the unbeliever's hope. God's purpose for believers is that they, that we, that you and I, will be conformed to the image of Christ so that we might share in the glory that humanity rejected so long ago and of which we felt short and for which believers now hope. All of this Paul writes about in, in Romans 1.23 and 3.23 and in 5 verse 2. And in Romans 8.29 to 30 from the message says, God knew what he was doing from the very beginning. He decided from the outset to shape the lives of those who love him along the same lines as the life of his son. The son stands first in the line of humanity he restored. We see the original and intended shape of our lives there in him. And after God made that decision of what his children should be like, he followed it up by calling people by name. After he called them by name, he set them on a solid basis with himself. And then after getting them established, he stayed with them to the end, gloriously completing what he had begun. This is our hope. Until this hope is realized, Paul affirms God's love. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Christ saves. Christ justifies. Christ reconciles. The name embraces all our weaknesses. Jesus Christ, access to God's grace, where we stand. In that name we have peace. In that name we have hope. And in that name we boast. Jesus, the final proof of God's love for you and me. Amen. Lord God, we come before you and we cry, Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. You are the creator of all life, the abundant provider of all who trust in you. You are our strength and strong shield, and to you we come this day. May our hearts sing of your goodness and may praise flow from our lips as we stand in awe of you. Oh Lord, we thank you for your great mercy which binds us to you as your children, a privilege we could not glean by our own works but is due to the work of your Son, Jesus Christ. His cross is our sign of your great love and grace. Oh, Father, Father, we come before you in prayer for this world and her people. We ask for forgiveness for our negligence toward you, for for making idols of objects which hold no real value, and for setting aside all that is truth in you. We live in a world which is still shaken from COVID-19, and though there is recovery in our world, we still live in times which are at a standstill for many. This morning, Lord, I talked to our church about having hope and peace in you. We cannot live in such a way unless your Holy Spirit is within us. And so we ask for a fresh falling of your Holy Spirit upon us all. Whatever personal trial we are facing due to COVID-19, 
whether that's isolation, depression, loneliness, fear, financial stress and anxiety, we ask that you meet us all in the midst of it. We watch the world fight against prejudice and in sometimes violent ways and sometimes peaceful ways, but Lord, may we all stand up against prejudice in our world. Psalm 18 reads, I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I called to the Lord who is worthy of praise, and I have been saved from my enemies. The cords of death entangled me, the torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. The cords of the grave coiled around me, the snares of death confronted me. In my distress I called to the Lord, I cried to my God for help. From his temple he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. O oh Lord, these are the words of King David as he cried out to you, and we cry out to you, Lord, for, for you to hear our voice from your holy temple, and to save us from the death of this world which surrounds us in the news, in the reports we read, in all we hear. It surrounds us, Lord, like the torrents of destruction which David mentions. But David did not leave his prayer or his words there, for he knew in whom he could turn to in times of trouble. For his words continue on, Lord. And he writes, to the faithful you show yourself faithful. To the blameless you show yourself blameless. To the pure you show yourself pure. But to the devious you show yourself shrewd. You save the humble, but bring low those whose eyes are haughty. You, Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. With your help, I can advance against a troop. With my God, I can scale a wall. Oh, David saw it. David knew it, Lord. And with David, we proclaim your goodness, your righteousness, your faithfulness, your light, and your strength to all that we encounter in this world and to our own inner person which we sometimes fight against as well. We stand firmly upon the foundation of Jesus Christ and we know that whatever we may encounter in this world, we are victorious in Him who died for us, in Him who is resurrected to your right hand and in Him who died so that we might have life. Oh, have mercy upon us, Lord, we pray. We thank you for your great love and for our victory in Jesus. We proclaim it, and may we live it. And it is in his name we pray. Amen. May you have the peace of Christ in your heart as you go throughout this day, throughout this next coming week, and today and today. May you boast in that peace that you have because Jesus Christ gave his life for you. And may your peace transcend into the lives of those that are coming into contact with you, wherever they might be, whether they're just in your home or if you're out in the grocery store or wherever. Put the peace of Christ to you. Amen.